I have yet to speak out publicly about the big Intel issues, which honestly are plaguing a range of CPUs right now. But I have even more bad news for you guys. Let me show you. This is arguably one of the nicest computers I have ever built. To me, it is so close to perfection, apart from the glaring fact that it uses Intel, but not just any Intel CPU one of the most common chips that are dying, and I suspect might be in the process of degrading itself beyond repair, literally as we speak. So hopefully Intel's BIOS microcode will help without affecting performance. But look at this. This is one of my other systems, the one I personally use the most. Running OCCT stress test, everything looks good for AMD's 5800X. But let's move over to the other system. Here we have Intel's 13900K, struggling to run OCCT, even though it's a much more powerful processor. It does look like it's churning through the task, but this glitchy and hanging and weirdness, that really shouldn't be there. It's especially weird given that the 12900K, my 12900K, doesn't do that. And it's not just OCCT. I usually blame Adobe for Premiere Pro issues because, well, they've earned that reputation. And CPUs tend to be the component to last. It, they usually don't give any issues. But given that crashes are becoming more frequent, other weirdness mixed in there, and reports of Intel chips failing, I am not sure Adobe is entirely to blame anymore. So what's going on here? And why is this issue one of the most destructive things Intel could be on the hook for? Well, we'll cover that today in the hopes that this nearly $600 CPU is okay probably isn't. I'll explain where we are right now in the Intel situation and also test the latest BIOS, see how it affects performance. But either way you look at it, I don't think this is going to be good for Intel. Let me explain. Are you tired of overpaying for your favorite games and essential software? Then you need to check out whokeys.com. In fact, let me show you the benefits and how you could save. There's over a hundred games for you to browse for cheap. You can save every month on your Office subscription, even fixing the Windows watermark, ruining your game capture and limiting your Windows customization. So let's get a Windows key. I especially like that you can use PayPal for easy, secure checkout. And using coupon code TL25 gets you 25% off these already low prices. All you need to do is paste your key to become fully activated. And TechLens subscribers like the fast key delivery and peace of mind that I use the service personally. So what are you waiting for? Start saving money and visit the Hookie sponsor link below. Luna, hey, you're cute. Let's quickly recap the situation because it's pretty shady actually and could affect all users, even if you don't use Intel. You see, users have been experiencing an abnormally high amount of crashing when performing tasks, from as simple as opening your favorite game, which can trigger a crash making it unplayable, or other applications you might use for work, which may not function properly with these CPUs, meaning you could struggle to do your work and it could directly affect your income, which sounds pretty familiar or even more widespread if it calls to a server or a cluster with these chips and the chips are failing. Let's just say that CrowdStrike showed us exactly how bad infrastructure outages can be, and it doesn't matter what components the end device is using. So which chips are we talking about? Well, the instability seems to be most prevalent in high-end K-series CPUs from Raptor Lake. Think 13900K and 14900K. But as this story evolves and it is very much evolving, it looks like it could be much more CPUs. Like the last two generations of Intel CPUs, most of them could be affected. So what did they have to say for themselves? Well, Intel initially blamed motherboard manufacturers, saying they were running these chips out of spec, which unfortunately for us is actually a believable stance given videos on this topic have been circulating for years, but also doesn't take responsibility for the fact that definitive information regarding these defaults was basically non-existent until mid this year. It's like clicking reset to default and then all of the settings change to a question mark. If you don't tell people what the default is, you can't pass all of the blame on them for not implementing it. And as far as I've recorded, my CPU hasn't been fed stupid voltages. Some people have even underclocked. So I'm not saying it's not the issue, but it also doesn't sound like the full story either. So Intel came in and effectively said, look, use these default settings and everything will be fine. For which they provided default, different default and default default with sometimes no defaults. 
Let's clarify, because clearly you need help following basic instructions like this god-awful table. Intel is telling you to use default only where applicable and unless default isn't recommended because recommended supersedes default. So make sure you enter one of these default values correctly based on default recommended default or default default, which may or may not be baseline. Are you confused yet? Because I think Intel might be but I suspect this was quite an intentional action on their behalf, and we'll get into why that's the case a bit later. But even when decrypting this dumpster fire of a guidance chart, the issues still aren't fixed. Add in reports of oxidization during manufacturing, for which they still haven't provided a list of affected batches, avoiding responsibility even further. And trickle feeding extremely important information, it doesn't help Intel not look like they're trying to cover something up passing blame and not supporting their end users effectively. There are so many better ways to handle this entire situation. So to a lot of people, it looks like Intel have knowingly manufactured faulty chips, which is a potentially multi-billion dollar issue they may not be able to afford right now and could have knock-on effects not only for America, where Intel is based, but the world as a whole, given how few chip manufacturers there are, especially with AMD's complete inability to capitalize on anything. Having an underdog is a good thing until it replaces Goliath, but no matter the company, as consumers, we should all stand up for one another and see this through to the end, because so far, it has not been good for Intel. And looks like they're trying to do everything they can to deflect and absolve themselves from responsibility. So there's fundamentally two options available for Intel, with some wild and potentially financially devastating outcomes. Number one, as voltage and power draw is suspected to play a role in this instability, release a microcode update to tame this, which Intel have committed to releasing probably within a few days of this video going live. If it works, it is probably the cleanest way to fix this problem, and Intel only really have to deal with the replacement of current affected chips. Now, the potential problem of this is that if it reduces performance to lower than what Intel advertised, I can see a significant legal issue right there. I am not a lawyer, but it seems pretty obvious. If you bought a monitor that would randomly turn off, there's obviously a problem, but the fix for it meant that you couldn't display full color or could only go to 50% brightness. That's not the product I bought. You fix one issue and created another. Buyers are not going to be happy with that. So let's see if that might be the case with my chip and test BIOS 19.02, containing microcode version 0x125. As far as how this is different from the microcode Intel will officially finally release is a good question. But in a glimmer of hope, Jace Two Cents is the first to cover Intel's official microcode update just the other day and found it doesn't perform much different to an older microcode from what we're using today, which seems really promising. So let's run Cinebench and see what happens. Now, this is from a test that I did when I first built the machine, and this is with the 125 microcode BIOS. That is basically a double digit percentage drop in performance, bringing my CPU closer to an M1 Ultra than, well, itself. But I can't be 100% certain what BIOS I had at the beginning and how the defaults have changed between the two. So what I decided to do was install 16.01 from the beginning of this year, and even then, we are still getting a 5% performance drop compared to the 125 microcode BIOS. There is some good news in there, the fact that single core performance hasn't changed really much at all. And I do need to stress that we will have to see how this compares when Intel officially release the microcode update for everyone. So stay tuned for that. But if this is any indication of Intel's microcode update, you might get a five to 10% drop in multi-core performance, and I don't think that's an acceptable situation to leave people in. Which makes the other options quite likely at this point, but they are seriously not good for Intel. Replace all CPUs where customers can demonstrate issues, and replace them with something of either the same or better performance than what they purchased, which is a massive financial loss. Plus, if the issue cannot be isolated to batches of these CPUs, they may not have a legitimate replacement because you have to understand the way that these CPUs are built and the timelines for R&D and manufacturing of them. They have very much already moved on to other developments and it may even cost them more to replace compared to refunding users. 
And on top of that, that doesn't help anyone that didn't buy their CPU through an authorized retailer, unless Intel specifically states that all CPUs can be returned. But given how they've been handling warranty replacements with this issue, I am not going to default to assume that they're going to do the right thing on this because their response to not getting a warranty replacement when you can demonstrate this issue is to try and RMA it multiple times. You're going to waste my time on your issue? No, you should just be accepting it. This is your problem that you're now trying to make my responsibility. That's not how that works. So what do I want to see from Intel? Honestly, it comes back to two things for me, pretty much only two things with number one being better transparency regarding affected chips in question, oxidization, batch numbers, warranty support, official power and requirements for future processors. And I'm just gonna stop there before I run out of breath and pass out. <laughs> Kinda like you. But the second thing is so infuriating that it needs to be said, and that is proactive and hassle-free support for your customers. Intel is a multi-billion dollar company and they probably should be. They took on all of the risk of development, manufacturing and marketing, which when it pays off, apparently makes you one of the most valuable companies in the world with billions of dollars. But when something happens, obviously a percentage of that money should be used to fix the situation and fix it in a way that your customers are happy with, especially as not all customers affected will get this information. So you're likely paying less than you should already. Otherwise, you are making me take on the risk and I'm going to find it harder to justify your cost. So my message to Intel, this will affect your bottom line one way or another. You can either handle it right and people will respond positively to it. You'll be seen as a good guy. And one suggestion would be like if you're extending to a five year warranty, don't even require proof of purchase until October 2027 for 13th gen. No matter where you bought it from, it is not possible for those CPUs to be older than five years. So until that date, why does it matter if the CPU is secondhand, authorized retailer or not? If it's an official Intel CPU and it's less than five years old by definition, it should just be returnable. But that's just one example because realistically, you need to be looking at this whole situation and thinking about what's best for the end user because the other option is you're going to be paying for this with your reputation, which could cost you even more. And we will be revisiting this. And I genuinely hope I have better news for you in the future. So I hope you come back for that. But if you want to find something Intel is doing right, you can check out another one of their recent mistakes in this video right here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe. They are always appreciated. And I hope you have an amazing day.